Aloha to our Techie friends in Hawaii and hello to everyone. This is our next tutorial in our series on web scrapping using Python. I am Scrappy and this is World Web Scrapping. There we go! Hello and welcome to World Web Scrapping. In today's tutorial we are going to talk about how the website detects web scrapping bots and it is very essential to understand how websites detect bots because then only you can effectively do web scrapping and also you need to be aware of how do they detect and if you are not aware of this thing they can easily detect and block you and you need to take uh, be uh, cautions and you need to make provisions to avoid getting a block and for that reason you need to know how the websites can detect a bot so let's get started so almost every company and uh, individual benefit from web scrapping so if uh, because you know the very basic example is uh, Google. Google does uh, web scrapping whenever you type a query in Google. It is going to look for those words and it is going to scrap data from the website to show you the results. So every company in a way needs to, uh, if they want to be visible on Google, they need to allow bots on uh, their websites but they can do something that they can allow only like uh, Google and Yahoo and these kind of crawlers only on their website and uh, they block the other bots they can do that and they are more often do that many of uh, the companies are very supportive of web scrapping and they even have APIs to you use the publicly available data like uh, Google and Twitter and even Amazon have API but but many of the, the companies do not allow web scrapping and they are very strictly against it. So it is uh, necessary to block users because bots can not only be web scrapper, they could be bots like uh, they could hack the website or they could uh, delete the data, they could uh, manipulate the data on the website. There can be many bots like that. So it is an essential for the companies to check for the bots and discourage them also so on both the sites the companies keep inventing there are services which you are like specialized in detecting bots and then there are services uh, which specialize in scrapping so it is a fight on both the sites the scrappers comes they keep improving every day like uh, detecting new ways to scrap and then there are companies that keep coming with uh, new ways to block the website scrappers bots. So there are several ways I will tell you today how it works, how the companies can detect the bots. So bots and humans can be both detected by analyzing their behavior, making a fingerprint of them. So what that means is uh, that when you go through to a website through your browser, so you send some data with a request to that web server and then web server that data contains your fingerprint like your IP addresses and uh, the configuration of your system and some other things in that and using that thing the website can detect if you are a genuine user or not and if you are making like thousands of requests every second using a bot that it does uh, mean that you are not an actual person because an actual person cannot do that and uh, the these are some very simple ways to detect so basic things is uh, to make a fingerprint of every user to identify them that's a basic thing in detecting so where can website detect bot the website can detect bot on the client side on the server side and uh, for example client side it means uh, your browser itself and the server side means the web server, the server of the website and mostly website use a combination of these two things to detect the bots. And also, but these uh, techniques can also result in the like some genuine users getting blocked and some like fake users like uh, bots getting bypassed. Nothing is uh, perfect in a way, so it can happen. Now the server side bot detection when this level of detecting bots start 
at the server level where on the web server of the website or in the website using the services of a company let's uh, say Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or something like that so that data first goes through their web server and it is detected the bot inspect at uh, their end so it can happen in that way so and uh, the first thing there are two ways to fingerprint a user first on um, one is HTTP fingerprinting so it is done by I have uh, talked about this in the earlier tutorial this is uh, basically to find out some very basic things that are involved in sending a request like a user agent that we have uh, seen and the request headers like a referrer cookie and there are other things I will show you a simple like header that goes uh, with the uh, with the request so if you see this is uh, amazon.com and this is uh, what goes into a request header if I go through a browser accept encoding and uh, SF language connection length content type cookie then there is a host origin referrer and uh, these many things so the website can use all of these things to track a user so if you are not sending some basic things like uh, if we have uh, seen that if you don't um, send a user agent if you don't send headers with uh, amazon.com it will block us so that's uh, what they can do then the order of these headers could be important if uh, we are sending these headers so that does not match uh, the order that the website except so they can block us then the most important thing that is IP address so if you are using a single IP address and you are sending a thousand of requests and if the website does not support web scrapping then they are going to block you so IP address is the biggest thing then there is a TCP and IP stack fingerprinting so what happens is when the visitor goes to a website so there is some data exchange between the website and the visitor using TCP or IPS over TCP and IP so these uh, TCP stack fingerprint has details like uh, mentioned here like uh, the packet size or there will be the window size and window scaling value and like uh, there are these uh, flags that the where these flags are available so these flags are not sent with the request then it could be detected that the user agent is falling and uh, this is not a person it is a visitor so these are some ways then behavior analysis as uh, I talked about like once uh, the website has identified constructed a unique fingerprint they analyze the user pattern like how the person is using the website and if there are like a lot of requests being sent and it is automatically that it is not a person a human can do that then every page you will visit after that if you go to uh, one page Amazon and if you go to second third fourth like that for those initial header and the package uh, that were exchanged between the browser and the web server they will again match every time and if any time it is a detective that it's a bot then they will block you so if the website gets suspicious instead of directly blocking the bot it's uh, firstly sends the capture and if you don't have capture services enabled then you will not be able to go through the website so that's the capture solving services comes in picture then there is any request that comes from these fingerprints to any website that use the same for detection services so if there are one website is uh, using one kind of web detection service and the same service providers providing a service to another website also so if you try to scrap that website also then you can get blocked if you are blocked from one side then the web detection services block you automatically on the other side also and also they can create a pool and identify that these IPs are scrappers and block those websites through the all of uh, their services so that can happen and this block list can be permanent or can 
uh, last for a few hours. Then client-side bot detection is uh, like the detection that happens on your browser. So almost all the bot detection service uses a combination of uh, the browser detection with the server-side detection to block the bots. The first thing that happens when a site starts to apply site detection is uh, that old scrapper that is not a real browser will get blocked immediately. So what happens in the client-side detection is uh, the bot detection try to identify that it is a browser it is not a scrapper so the simplest way to the active web browser is to give it some javascript code to solve and the web browser can solve a javascript code while if uh, the web scrapper is used then it uh, cannot solve that code but then again there are some web scrapper services again libraries like uh, selenium puppeteer headless browser playwright they can use a browser as they are scrapper they can control the browsers uh, they can control your chrome and they can control your internet explorer these uh, selenium puppeteer etc they can control your browsers and they can send a request for your browser instead of sending direct requests so that's the way uh, these can be bypassed also and then guys uh, there are some common features that there are used to construct a browser fingerprint again I have talked about this. This is a user agent, so these are the things that are sent with a request and then it comes to a web server then we talked about the user agent on the web server that is uh, the response user agent that is being sent by the web server so there are these things like user agent again current language do not track status that uh, we have seen then supported HTML CSS rules plugins installed in the browser the web server can detect your plugins also and support supported the JavaScript future. That is uh, the most important thing and your screen resolution, your time, zone operating system, CPU, GPU, etc. These things can be detected by the web server using your web browser and uh, using these things are your fingerprints that can be constructed from the client side. So again, these are all the things that uh, can happen. Using these all uh, techniques, websites can detect a bot from the server side. So apart from these uh, techniques, bot detection tools can also look uh, for any flags that can tell them that the browser is being controlled through an automation library like uh, the presence of bot specific signatures and the presence of non-standard browser features. Or say if a common automation tool such uh, as uh, Selenium, Puppeteer or Playwright are being used. So the website can detect that and they can block it. So bypassing these and there are many ways these can be bypassed also. But again there comes keeps coming against like uh, more security features that website keep uh, deploying. And so that way you will like uh, they keep updating their structure to block web scrapper and web scrapper keep updating their libraries to scrap those websites so it is uh, in like continuous war and keeps happening so be aware just uh, like the first thing to see is uh, that if the website allows scrapping so you need to check that first so if the website is strictly against it if you can find a website that allows scrapping it's uh, better to go there if uh, the website offers APIs it's better to use the API service to scrap the data if it's extremely necessary to go to a website and scrap the data then be aware of uh, these old things and uh, take all the precautions and to avoid getting blocked so that is all for today my tetchy friends if you like the video please like and subscribe to our channel see you in the next video tutorial and do not stop visiting our website leave your comments below and ask me any question you have I will be happy to answer them Link is given in the description of this video to get code and full material. Stay happy, stay safe, stay touchy.